Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabans. We welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We we'll cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we have a hell of a show uh, in store for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe <coughs> uh, to the channel. So, as you guys know, Skip Bayless pretty much uh, uh, made some big news yesterday. Where he came out there and basically confirmed all of the all of the rumors and all of that by saying that he's officially done with Undisputed. We want to read his tweet that he published 24, 21 hours ago. He said, today was my last day, a uh, last show on Undisputed. I'm leaving FS1. I've been planning to pursue other opportunities for several months. I had a great eight year run with a lot of great people at Fox, but now I'm excited for what's coming up. Stay tuned. And then. He put out a subsequent tweet where he said, Ernestine and Hazel surprised me with a quote, quote unquote, congratulations. Or so I mean, quote unquote, congratulations balloons when I returned from my last undisputed. Can't wait for what's next. Here we go. So that's what Skip Bayless said, right? Skip Bayless said that he's no longer going to be on undisputed. And with that, it has created a void, right? It has created a void. If you guys remember going back eight years ago when he joined undisputed, uh, he was the face of the network of FS1. He was the face of the network. He had the flagship show with himself and Shannon Sharp, and he was going to be going up, going head to head with this former show that he used to be on on ESPN, first take at ESPN. And for a number of years, they held their own. Were they ever really, really a threat to ESPN first take? No, right? Because it's the bigger platform. But nevertheless, uh, FS1 was still, I mean, uh, undisputed with Skip and, Skip and Shannon's undisputed was a very, uh, it was a competitive show, right? But then what happened a year ago, Shannon Sharp leaves the show and then we witnessed an incredible decline in ratings and then it just kept on getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And then ultimately we got the news that Skip Bayless is no longer going to be working at the network. So then, so then <clears throat> many of us began to speculate who's going to be Skip Bayless's replacement. Who's going to be the person to replace him? And I've said, but nobody's going to listen to me, obviously. I said one of the people that I think they should go out there and get is Max Kellman, right? Max Kellman, I think, would do an excellent job in that role. So then what happened? Yesterday, uh, Mitch sent us uh, uh, into the group chat. He sent us um, an article from Front Office Sports that was basically talking about a potential replacement for Skip Bayless. Uh, and they actually named the name. But then they also reveal who they are planning in this case, FS1, to make the face of the network, which I think will surprise a lot of you. So the article starts off with the headline sources. With Skip Bayless gone, FS1 could blow up studio lineup. It then continues on. Skip Bayless' departure from FS1 could be the impetus for the networks to for network to blow up most of his weekday studio show lineup, sources tell front office sports. With Bayless tweeting that Friday's show was the last after eight years at FS1, the spotlight now turns to the rest of the network's on-air talent and studio shows. I'm hearing FS1 could completely revamp its current lineup, canceling Bayless' is undisputed, moving talent around to different or new shows, and possibly building a new program ar around Chicago-based sports radio personality Danny uh, Parkins. According to my sources, FS1's executives believe First Things First star Nick Wright is the future of the network, but they do really want to take the 39-year-old Nick uh, Wright <clears throat> and on your partners Chris Broussard and Kevin Wiles away from their current 3 to 5 p.m. spot Eastern time slot and make them, uh, make them the complete head-to-head -head with rivals ESPN's powerhouse first take bayless the godfather of uh, sports debate was chewed up by his former on-air partners stephen a smith and shannon sharp from 10 a.m to noon in their head-to-head -head, uh, uh battle if i'm right i'm not sticking my ascending program in front of that bus saw so it's probably more likely says my source that that fs1 takes the promising duo of emmanuel acho and joy taylor from speak to 5 p.m and builds a new program uh, builds a new morning show around them they also like Keyshawn johnson and richard sherman two of bayless's rotating partners on the un on undisputed and could cast them on other shows meanwhile fs1 is intrigued by parkins the 37 year old chicago radio talk show host who was recently guest who recently guest host the herd with colin cowherd he's good friends with Wright. going back to their days at syracuse cowherd publicly called parkins the most talented sports radio talk host out there right now on his podcast there's no doubt 
about one thing. FS1's management is under pressure. It already looks foolish for letting Shannon Sharp walk last year in favor of Bayless, just as the Pro, Hall, <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Famer was ascending in popularity and Bayless was fading. Now Sharp's one of the hottest sports media personalities in the country making an impact on ESPN and with Club Shay Shay's podcast slash YouTube show. Sharp's also poised to inherit the lead role of on ESPN First Take if Smith leaves for late night TV politics or acting. This means Sharp will likely be a thorn in his old network side for years to come. FS1 needs to do something this summer to improve his weekly studio lineup in time for the 2024 NFL season. Studio shows are designed to help drive viewers to live game coverage with Tom Brady joining as Fox uh, Fox number one NFL uh, game analyst and the network's poised to, uh, poised to broadcast Super Bowl. The sports cable network needs a healthy studio lineup. One of the many puzzling things about Bayless's tenure was how FS1 let him talk nonstop about the NBA when Fox doesn't have any NBA rights. So, you heard what the article had to say uh, there. What are my thoughts on this? Based on everything I just read, it looks like I'm I'm not going to like pretty much any of the decisions that they're going to make. It looks like I'm just not going to like any of the decisions that they're going to make. I think the best show that they currently have going, in my personal view, uh, what is it? It's First Things First. I think that's their best show. I think that's their best lineup with Nick Wright. Chris Broussard and Kevin Wiles, I think they all play off, off of each other perfectly. They have great chemistry together. I love some of the things that they do throughout the show to keep it engaging, keep viewers and continue to retain viewers' attention. I think that's their best show. So moving that to the morning slot, I think they could do well, right? I think they can do well. So that's the one move I like. That's the one move. Now, regarding Danny Parkinson, I don't know who that person is. I Googled him yesterday. I have seen him before, uh, but... Listen to some of the things with Keyshawn and all of that. It doesn't really excite me, to be quite honest with you. I think I think whatever move they're planning on making, I don't think is going to make a real impact on ESPN. I think whatever they tried to do, it's not going to work because ESPN has just they just have better personalities. They have better shows like just just name them. Get up. Yes. Uh, what is it? First take around the horn. Uh, um, all of the you know, what, what is it? NBA countdown. All of, they have the best shows. In terms of personalities, they know how to build out their personalities better. It, it's just a fact, right? And then they now added, as the article alluded to, Shannon Sharp to the lineup. I said that was the single stupidest mistake by letting Shannon Sharp walk. I think the thing they should have done is maybe put him on a different show. You don't let talent like that walk out of the door. You just don't let that happen. You don't let it happen. And Shannon Sharp has been a boon for ESPN. A boon. A boon. Imagine if FS1 still had him. So that's their mistake. But based off of what I'm reading and what I'm hearing, none of this really excites me. Right? None of those, apart from, apart from, in my personal view, apart from, uh, um, uh, what is it? Apart from first things first, that's the only thing that sounds interesting or exciting to me. I would also consider trying to bring Rob Parker back on, on, on TV. I think he does a good job. I said they should try to bring Max Kellerman. I think he does a good job. Right? Bring people that people are excited and want to hear about. Right. This is just my view, but I could be wrong. I've never ran a network, don't have any uh, uh, intentions of running a network. I'm sure these guys know a lot more than I do. I'm just speaking from the standpoint as a viewer and based off of what I'm hearing and what I've seen. None of this is really going to move the needle for me. This is just my opinion. Maybe they need to read some of the YouTube comments and really go out there and listen to what viewers are saying and what people are really saying. And instead, not spend so much time just looking on Nielsen ratings and all of that. Maybe actually listen to what people actually think, because those ratings don't really capture sentiment. That's why YouTube is the best. YouTube, apart from the, 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 the you know them paying as much as television does, but YouTube gives you more information. They give you more feedback. They give you the views. They give you the likes. And most importantly, they give you the comments. And of course, the time and all of that. So, so you get a better sense of what people actually think about your show. Your show could be getting views, but you don't really know what people think. People could be watching it begrudgingly because there's probably nothing else better to watch. So these are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you guys on the next show. Peace.